write for like six months before you ever try stand-up comedy. Because a lot of people, they're like, oh, I'm funny with my friends. I can just go up on stage and just be funny, just like that. And they get up and they're totally unprepared. And they realize that they can't just do bar jokes or internet jokes. And, um, and they basically just tank because the audience is there to see material, you know. Even though it's supposed to be spontaneous, they're there to see material. So um, I would say write for like six months and then um, go to like your local open mic. And uh, usually if you tell them that you're there um, as like a first timer and you sign up like on the sheet and say first timer, um, they'll let you on. But the difference is if they don't see that you've even just been trying to write, they probably won't let you up again. But um, if they see that you've got any potential whatsoever, they'll totally let you on again because they'll see that. I feel like I still make all the mistakes when I started. You, it seems like once every like 50 shows you forget the key uh, mistakes. <laughs> like, keep it going for that guy. <laughs> um, the one thing, um, one crucial mistake uh, that I wish that I could always know in the back of my head is uh, don't try a new joke first. You know. Um, still to this day, I'll go up and I'll be like, oh, that's really funny. I'm gonna try it right off the bat and. Nine times out of ten, it's just going to tank, and you know because you don't have the confidence with it that you should have. So uh, don't try a new joke up front. I was in um, Langdon, North Dakota. I was doing um, this terrible high school lock-in, and uh, I accidentally said the word redneck, which up there, it, like redneck is like a, like you know like a really vulgar thing to them. Like they're not like some people are proud of being rednecks, but they don't like to be called rednecks. So they gave them door prizes of these jacks and super balls. So I said the word redneck, and then all of a sudden these kids were just throwing like their their super balls and their and their jacks and stuff. It was like a hailstorm of these things. And I like I was performing on like a gym floor, you know those wood bleachers where they pull them out like ka-chunk, ka-chunk, ka-chunk. Their principal comes out, grabs the microphone away from me, and is like, "Children, children, you are not going to graduate if you don't stop this." You need to shut up and enjoy his stand-up comedy. So then I just ate like a miserable death for like the next two to three minutes, and then I got off stage. And the worst part about that show was I wasn't even headlining the high school lock-in. I was only the opener. So I had to introduce the headliner, and he went out and just ate it for like 45 minutes. So, And I only got paid $150. Probably my half-hour special on Comedy Central. I'm not trying to be a jerk by saying that, but um, the audience was just so good. And it was like a dream, and um, you know, it, it's like a culmination of 13 years of work. I don't care if you're dirty, um, but it has to have a lot of, you know, a lot of clever content within it. Um, some people forget that and they just go for the dirty and they don't know what's missing. But it has to be clever. You. Even audience members now, they're so educated to comedy that they they come there just to hear something new, you know, to hear something that they've never heard before. Hi, my name is Pete Lee, and you're watching Five Questions.